All right, so thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, there are my, my slides. Let's see if I can. OK, so I'm from Cape Town in, uh, in South Africa, and I'm really very happy to be here in Aspatar, my first time. And thank you for, to Philip for in, to invite me here, and to FIFA to be with Isakos in this, uh, this collaboration. It's really, it's really exciting. You can see this is Cape Town, and this is our World Cup Stadium. We were there. And this is where we are now. This is the World Cup Stadium. The only thing, Philip, please, next time, can you get me a hotel that's a little bit higher? I, but uh, thank you very much. So I think it's very, very exciting. We are also a FIFA center of excellence. So when we, as you see, my, my topic of my slide has changed a bit. It's, uh, I will explain that to you not right now. But I'm going to talk more about ACL and my theory about ACL and really my personal vision through ACL. I think it will wake you up a little bit. And I'm sure I will have many attacks afterwards, which is good. But if you think about ACLs, the, the people that's made the biggest impression in bringing down the incidence of ACL surgery is FIFA. With this 11 plus, they have really changed. Not everybody does it, but we know that if you really do this, we change. Uh, so just to go back, these are, the, these are our machines that we develop, uh, eccentric ergometer. Yeah, unfortunately, I have recently, we have a, a company that's bought the, the rights to it, and they're worried about the IP, so I was a little bit restricted. But what we can do now is, this is, a, this is we work with our Springbok Rappi team, and we can simulate, really, this is for the forwards. These are one of our... Uh, uh, forwards that we do. This is a scrum machine that we are, we are developing with the same. We can do eccentric training, sport specific eccentric training. We are also working with, with India to, we can build robotic arms that can do eccentric, that you can hold on to the ball or the bat and really take you through specific movements. Before we had these, this is Donald Bradman, before athletes were just, they were freaks. They could do these things nobody really knew. Now we have scientists. We can see what, what activity they do, and we can really do sport-specific uh, 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 exercise. And my plan is, and we are, I'm inviting Philip to Cape Town in April to use Aspatar as really to develop soccer-specific eccentric training. So it's coming. If you want to learn more about it, it's going to happen hopefully right here in, uh, in Aspatar. So this is my journey through ACL surgery. I was uh, in the ACL study group. And these are the two guys that started. Werner Müller is an unbelievable guy. If you want to read anything about the ACL and how it works, he's already described this 30 years ago. Nothing is new. And this is an interesting guy. He's still alive, Dr. Ron Lucy. I met him in Jackson Hole. And he was the first guy. He was just a GP. He was the first guy to, one of the, there's always people around the world, but he described the pivot shift. And it's an incredible story how we got there. Uh, amazing guy. So really, my first thing that stuck with me is that when he did this experiment, he did it on a lady that was going to amputate her leg for diabetes, and he asked her, can I do an experiment on your knee before I amputate your leg? And she said, please, Dr. Losey, go ahead with it. He cut the ACL, and he saw no pivot shift. So that really stuck in my mind. So I think the problem with pivot shift, and you speak to a lot of people, I think it's the name. So we think that a pivot shift is when we do a pivot activity on the sports field, our knee shifts. That's not the, that's not the reason. A pivot shift, and this Doc Losey there, is the pivot of the knee that shifts. In a normal knee, the pivot is in the center of the knee. When we have an ACL injury, the pivot now shifts to this side, and now the movement is much more enlarged on the outside. So it's the pivot of the knee that shifts. That's where it really comes the name of, of pivot shift. But we cannot have this. We cannot have this if we have an intact, this area on the lateral side. If this is intact, we will again, we will not have a pivot shift. So the pivot of the knee shifts, but we have to have injury to the extra-articular uh, structures here. And Zhao gave us this nice talk where if it's both sides are intact, you do not have a pivot shift. So I think we have to really think about the, the, the pivot shift, and it's a disease of the lateral compartment of the knee. My next mentor and it was Freddy Fu. He introduced me to Isakos. He got me on the executive. I really didn't know what I was doing there, but it's been an incredible journey for me. And this is Lucy. This is the first humanoid that walked upright in Africa. And Freddie went to look at her, and he saw that she has double bundle. 
So yes, Freddie is the double bundle, but he really got us thinking, and he really examined it very well. So Lucy had the, had the double bundle. And then together with Dr. Fu, we did some studies on, on animals. I've dissected the, the knee of a, of a lion and of a, and of an elephant and of a hippo and all these, and it's amazing how similar they are. They have exactly the same ligaments that we have. And what we saw when we saw this is animals with a lot of rotation have really huge medial condyles, really big medial condyles. So we did a study, we did a study on a rotational study and we published it in the biomechanics and in the MRI similar to, to see what the rotation of the knee is and I asked my student to look at the medial condyle to see if the medial condyle really has a relationship to how much the rotation there is in the knee but we could not find anything so I told the student I'm sorry but you, you know Dr. Fu is wrong, we're wrong, leave it alone. But after that when I started thinking of the lateral compartment and it's amazing that Zhao has now independently find the same thing we went to look at the lateral compartment and find that the lateral compartment is really the key to rotation and especially the key after ACL surgery. So a mismatch between a big lateral condyle and a small lateral plateau. This is really the answer. So really what we looked at, this is what we looked. If you have a big lateral condyle on a small tibia, this is, where, this is, the, this is the key to the ACL, I think, for the future. So, and at the ACL study group, I've been there for, for 20 years, and we really haven't made that much progress. We have put the tunnel all over the place. We have done, we have great fixation. We have great tunnel positioning. Our equipment is better. Our rehabilitation is scientific. But in that one specific group, the 18 to 19 to 20 year old, the non-contact player, the young patient that has an injury, which I think soccer is, is really right up there, the incidence, the re-rupture incident is, up, is still up to 30% and we haven't made a change. So I think we have to look at it a little bit differently. So this non-contact injury. And that made me, so we are missing something. That made me start thinking. So even from Africa, we can think and we can start theorizing about these things. So there must be predisposing factors that we miss. We are getting the mechanism of injury wrong. And I think this is the major thing. If you see people presenting on ACL, they put all ACL injuries in the same basket. It is an absolute disaster. All ACLs are not created the same. All ACLs should not be treated the same. So we have some published work on genetic predisposition to ACL injury, and I think this is very important. We can, in that, especially that female, young female group, they have the Col5 gene, and they are genetically predisposed to have injury. But being a surgeon, there's nothing that I can really do about this, so let's, but we shouldn't forget about this, but I cannot really do anything about it. So then we started looking at the mechanism of injury, and what really struck me that in the non-contact injury, this is an injury of compression. You know that vulnerable position when they land like this? It's compression. We are putting weight on the knee, yet the ligaments are failing. Now, if you understand ligaments, we think that under compression, bone will fail, and under tension, the ligaments will fail. But here we have an injury, we have compression on the knee, yet the ligaments fail. So this didn't really make sense to me. And that made me think that it must be the bony morphology that's driving this knee, and that's what causes the injury and not the ACL itself. So we all know about this vulnerable position that's been described very well, that we have to stay away from. But I just want to add these two. This is from the same, from the same uh, website in, in the US where they explain this. And what you can see, ACL occur when the bones of the leg twist in opposite directions under full body weight. And this is internal rotation, external rotation. But look here, here they say the same, but look what they show, there's an external force. Now once you have external force, this is a completely different injury. And here's the same, the vulnerable position, but they show the, the medial side opening up. The medial side does not open up in this injury. This is a different injury, so there's a lot of confusion in the literature. Contact, non-contact, these are different injuries, we have to look at them differently. And you can see, these kinds of injuries, if your skis, if you have big skis and your skis go the one way, there is nothing that you can do about it. This ski will just twist your knee and it will tear your ACL apart. There are no predisposing factors in this knee. It's the, it's the, it's the ski, the forces are just too big. But if you do surgery on these guys, the, the re-rupture rate is very low because they will never, if they don't go back to this position, they will not tear it again. 
So I think we have to, we have just lumped everybody together. Nobody really knows what makes sense. When does you do extra articular? When did we do everything? I will give you some thoughts today just to think about it. So really, when you think about ACL injuries, and we're talking about this specific injury, and I think soccer is a big, it's a compression injury. So now we have a compression injury. The femur is put down, down the tibia is internal rotation, and the femur slips off the back of the tibia. This is the injury. Dr. Philip Rondal has already has, has spoke about that earlier. Now, really look, look at the injury. This is the injury, this is our bone patterns, and this is the position that the knee is at the time of injury. That's it. Now, you tear your ACL, but all these anterolateral structures, they must be torn from here to there. They have to be torn. Posterior medial meniscus, all of these structures are torn. Posterior tibial plateau is depressed, and all of us have seen this on MRI. We see that depression in the back, and we think, okay, this is ACL, and what do we do? We reconstruct the ACL. Perhaps we have to, have to think again. So, I am not a shoulder surgeon, I don't do anything. I don't really like shoulder surgeons that much. Sorry, Peter, I don't know where he is. But you have to think of the lateral compartment of the knee. You have to think about, like, the shoulder. And look, look at this. This is, the, this is the knee, and here's the shoulder. Looks very similar, doesn't it? This is the shoulder dislocating. This is the lateral dislocating. So really, what we think, the Bankart lesion, and we have, we have done some work now, and the meniscus on the lateral side tears, but what really tears is this menisco tibial ligament. And I'm sure you've all done scopes and you look inside there, and it looks like the lateral meniscus is a little bit torn, it's a little bit, uh, but it's intact, and we leave it alone. But this menisco tibial ligament is torn, and perhaps we can think of that as the Bankart lesion of the, of the knee. This here, this is the heel sacs lesion. We all have, have seen of that, that uh, that indentation there, that just means how, how much the compression was. So perhaps this is the heel sac lesion of the, of the knee. Now, when we correct, this is, the, this is the pathology that we have here. We cannot surely just do one operation. We cannot just do an ACL reconstruction. So we can do an ACL reconstruction, that's fine. But surely we have to do something about the meniscus. And also this ligament, the menisco tibial ligament at the back there. Peter Fadong told us that the meniscus is very important. So we have to fix that. We also have to fix the, the posterior capsule, I think. This, this is torn. This is sort of the, the, the bank heart lesion. And we can't really do much, much about that. OK, the tibial plafond at the back. Should we, should we really repair that? And we've shown that if you don't repair that, the tibial plafond is now much smaller, and this knee is unstable. And we are doing, we've done some clinical work, and we've also done some research to show that you can actually you can get that back but perhaps in the future, we have like the shoulders, we now have a, a, a latter J, I think they call it. Posterior tibial protection. And of course, that, that these, these lateral structures, that's coming now, and I think for the first time, the results that's coming out with lateral augmentation, we are now changing. We are now changing the outcome of ACL surgery. So this is just to, to show you, this is the lateral part of the knee that, that dislocates. This is the ACL when the knee is normal. And that's, but it's the lateral side that really moves a lot. So if we do operations on this side, we'll be much more effective. And I have to recognize that the medial side, I think if it goes even further, then you injure the posterior medial meniscus. And uh, Philippe Nere has, has, has made us this aware. And I think, but this fits in with my whole theory, but with this large, large rotational injury. So if it goes even further, the posterior medial meniscus is injured, and you have to do something about that too. I think you also have to do something about the slope. If you have this kind of slope and you just do the ACL, the forces will be too back. We haven't, we haven't done any of these things, so I think we have to start looking at the slope. Very important. The French have always looked at it. I think the French were miles ahead. Unfortunately, there was another country that came in and sort of took over, left us 20 years behind, but I think we're getting back into that. So I think looking at the ACL injuries in the dislocated lateral compartment. Just simplistic. That's what, we have, what we're looking for. And I think if we're looking at it this way, we will start making some improvements. But I just want to say again, this is not for all ACLs. These are for these type of the, for the vulnerable position. When you land into this position, you will dislocate your lateral compartment. We know the best treatment is to do the plus 11, not to get in this position. But once you've torn it, you have to look at all the 
pathology with a knee in the algorithm. So, in ACL surgery, this is going to be my mission for the next 10 to 15 years. I really want to show that this is the way we have to look at the knee. In Isakos, my mission is to, and what's one of the reasons that I'm here, we are starting a Middle East and Africa regional society under the, under the auspices of, of Isakos. So I think it's a really exciting time that the Middle East and Africa will get together. We'll have our own meetings, we'll have our own fellows, and we can really become part of the bigger Isakos uh, family. So thank you very much, and I hope you keep this date at uh, Shanghai next year. Thank you. <laughs>